In this video, we are going to graph the inverse sine function and identify the domain and range. Here we begin with the original sine graph. Now sine is a function because it passes the vertical line test. That means if I draw any vertical line, it will only intersect the graph once. However, for a function to have an inverse, it must be one-to-one. -one. In other words, the graph must pass the horizontal line test. This means that if I draw any horizontal line, it will only intersect the graph one time. Clearly, we see that the sine function is not one-to-one. -one. It fails the horizontal line test. But mathematicians are clever. Mathematicians decided to restrict the domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. In that way, the graph passes the horizontal line test, and thus the sine function has an inverse. So we are going to restrict the graph from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. If I come over here to the side and redraw, I'm just going to draw the interval between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And here we have 1 and we have negative 1. And we have a point at 0, 0, pi over 2, 1, and negative pi over 2, negative 1. And the graph comes out like this. Now, in order to graph inverse sine, we want to go through a series of steps. Step 1, draw a neat number quadrant. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to draw... A number quadrant. One thing that is important to note is that pi over 2 is approximately 1.6, so it's important to put pi over 2 in between the numbers 1 and 2. So that's what I'm going to do. So if this is my number 1, And here is my number two. Then we have negative one here, and we have negative two here. Maybe I should put it a little further. Okay, so number negative one should be about right here. And similarly, on the top here, so we have 1, and we have negative 1. And we have 2, and we have negative 2. And like we said, Pi over 2 will fit somewhere in the middle, so I'm going to put pi over 2 here, pi over 2, negative pi over 2 here, negative pi over 2, and pi over 2. Step 2, draw the line y equals x. So the line y equals x is basically if our input value is 1, our output value is 1, 0, 0, and negative 1, negative 1, and we just run a dotted line through that. And this is the line y equals x. Step 3, draw the restricted graph of sine. So I'm just going to copy this graph over here. Note that we have the point 0, 0. We have the point pi over 2, 1. 
and we have the point negative pi over 2, negative 1. So I'm going to put those points on the graph and draw. So we have 0, 0, pi over 2, 1, and negative pi over 2, negative 1. And I'm just going to draw the graph. coming out like this. Okay, can be a little challenging to draw sometimes. Step four, swap the x and y values. So we have zero, zero. Well, zero, zero stays the same. Pi over 2, 1 becomes 1, pi over 2. Negative pi over 2, negative 1 becomes negative 1, negative pi over 2. So I'm going to put those points on the graph. So we want 0, 0, which stays the same. 1 pi over 2, so 1 pi over 2 is here. Negative 1, negative pi over 2, negative 1, negative pi over 2 is here. You see that our x and y values are swapped. So the last step is to simply connect the dots and reflect about the line y equals x. So I'm just simply going to reflect about the line y equals x. And this new graph is our inverse sine graph. So now we're going to separate our new graph from the old one so that we can get a good look at our inverse sine graph. So I'm going to draw my graph here. And we have one, negative one, pi over 2, and negative pi over 2. And we have a point at 0, 0, 1 pi over 2, and negative 1, negative pi over 2. And we're just going to Draw our graph like this. Now it is easy to identify the domain and range of inverse sine. The domain of inverse sine is from negative 1 to 1. So domain. is from negative 1 to 1. And our range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Basically what this means, if you have a function in the form y equals inverse sine of x, our x values must fall within the domain. Similarly, if you have a function in the form y is equal to inverse sine of x, our y value must fall within the range. And if you were to observe that on the unit circle, the unit circle has negative pi over 2 at the bottom and pi over 2 at the top. And your y values must come from the right side of the unit circle. 
because our range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And that is how you graph the inverse sine function and identify the domain and range. Now you have all the tools that you need to evaluate inverse sine. That will be in another video. Thank you for watching and always remember that you are awesome.